I'm obviously the first person with the Neuralink implant. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> it, it's life changing. It really is. It makes it makes being it's going to sound kind of crazy, but it makes being paralyzed really not that bad. Just thinking about someone, say, breaking their neck or dislocating their neck, going into a hospital. And two days later, like getting surgery, getting an implant, something, two days later, walking out, like that is just, it's such a real possibility now. And that it makes me like so happy that other people don't have to go through this. It's everything I could have ever asked for and to be a part of it and to be helping in some way, to be able to be useful in some way, it, it completely changed how I live. I'm waking up at six, seven in the morning, just excited for the next day. And that's something that I never thought would happen to me ever again. It's more than I could ever ask for. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Welcome everyone, welcome. I think we all know what this All Hands is gonna be about. We have a very, very special guest. I've been calling him VVIP. You all know him as P1. You will know more about him today. And also for them to just share the journey that they've gone through and just, just sheer excitement for sharing all the progress so far with you all. So I guess without further ado, I am going to introduce who you guys all know as Participant 1 or P1 onto the stage. So please, please, please welcome, welcome with a big round of applause. Hello, humans. I wanted to start this out with a joke, but I didn't think you lesser beings would understand. <laughs> so um, I'll just hop right in. My name's Nolan. I'm obviously the first person with the Neuralink implant. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's, uh, it's been a wild ride. I think more than anything, I'm just impressed with all the work y'all have done. I mean, I did very little. I let them, you know, cut open my skull and put something in my brain and that's about it. I was asleep for all of it, so it was super easy. Y'all have been doing work for years and I'm just so impressed with everyone I've met. And I don't know, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing being able to tour everything and see you know, behind the scenes, it's just, it's fantastic. I can't express enough how awesome all of y'all are and how much this is going to change the world. I mean, I can already see it. It's been a month, I think a month was like two days ago, and how much my life has changed and how, how much it's improved, not just my life, but the implant and the work that y'all are doing. It's been, it's been fantastic. And I can only imagine where this is going to go. And y'all are really doing just the coolest thing in the world. I'm so happy to be a part of it. I feel so blessed to be a part of it. I, like I said, I didn't do a whole lot to get selected. I just was, happened to uh, align with everything that y'all wanted, that the study wanted. And really it was, it was luck, basically. And at any point today, uh, if y'all want to come talk to me, please come on up. I am basically like all of y'all, just with a bit of hardware in my, in my skull, a bit more compute power, and that's about it. So come on up, say hi. I'll ask you about how you got into this because I'm fascinated to hear all of your origin stories is what I've been calling it. And yeah, I think that's about it. Good work, everyone. So Nolan is a very impressive person, but I want to take just one moment before bragging on his behalf about all the work that he's done over the past month to also acknowledge his mother, his father, and his friend here in the front row. I've spent probably eight hours a day plus at their home the last sort of month-ish. And I just want to acknowledge that none of this would happen without them. I mean, literally none of it. And that's, it's a team effort the whole way. So just if I could have one round of applause for Nolan, but also the family. Yeah, and then I want to just talk briefly. It's sort of impossible task to try to summarize the quantity of data and the impact that Nolan and his family have had over the last month, not just on Neuralink, I want to be clear, not just on Neuralink, but on the entire industry and what it means for the field in general. So I have a pretty impossible job of trying to summarize with a few statistics what that looks like, just to give you a sense of the kind of crazy absurd amount of data and progress that we've made in the last month. So the first is we've done literally only 12 BCI sessions so far. We've done five days a week, eight hours a day. And for those of you who have worked in this field before, you know that this is not the usual thing to happen. If you have experience with BrainGate or previous clinical trials, it's typically a couple days a week for a couple hours. And by Monday morning, at usually around 11 a.m., we've usually surpassed what the normal is in terms of data collection for a week. The second thing I want to acknowledge is the amount of learning that we've taken away from those sessions. And so if you actually, if you look at the next bullet point there, we've taken 
I asked Sammy to compute this, 271 pages of notes over those 12 PCI sessions. And it's to the degree that Google Docs actually doesn't load that document anymore. And we had to start splitting it up day by day. And it's, it's actually not just about, you know, it just wouldn't happen with anyone. I want to emphasize that. Nolan has a very unique ability to give us useful comments on what needs to change to make our product better. His parents, his friends have given us same, similar comments. And these are pages of notes on what we need to change to make it better going forward. This is invaluable data. OK, now to the, the raw stats. Lifetime, Nolan has selected 89,285 targets in WebGrid. There is no one in the same league. There was one day. February 15th, Nolan selected 762 in one day. For reference, the maximum I think I've ever seen any living creature do is probably pager before that, and it's in the low thousands, like not even close. It's like a multiplier off. Absolutely absurd quantity of data. The total number of left clicks Nolan has done with his BCI, 111,000 left clicks. Right clicks, 35,000 right clicks. Okay, now for the most important stat of all. For those who know me, I'm a very competitive person. Nolan is competitive, but shows it in a slightly different way. And I've been playing chess with Nolan for the last month, incrementally as his BCI has improved. And I want to be very clear that Nolan will destroy me in any fair competition, OK? <laughs> it's not a close contest intellectually. Nolan however, nods. <laughs> Nolan nods. <laughs> however, when the BCI is not working well enough for him to beat me, and the clock time is small enough, I have a chance. And just for the record, Nolan has beaten me seven times in chess and has only lost four times. So he's up three games right yeah, now. Better believe it. And then the last two numbers I want to talk about, or maybe just the last number I want to talk about briefly is the one on the bottom here. And it's, I think, in some ways, the most important metric from the last month. And it's the number of hours of Civilization VI <laughs> played between 10 PM and 6 AM using a BCI. And it's on the or it's 7.6 7 hours of Civilization VI played between those hours. And Noel, I guess, do you want to just briefly comment on what that number means? And in terms of your life, your ability to use your BCI to do that versus what was the, the previous alternatives? Do you have any comments you want to share on that? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, maybe just as, as, a, as a reflection, when using your previous assist, assistive technology, things like the mouse stick, oh, yeah. was that a possibility for you? Or did it yeah, work? no, not really. Um, there are a lot of problems that arise with using other assistive technology. Basically what would happen is, say I would using my mouth stick, and if y'all don't know what a mouth stick is, it's basically just a stick that I hold in my mouth. And I can touch, um, I has a little piece of fabric on the end of it basically, and I can use it to touch like my iPad or something. If I were to use it for that long, I run the risk of getting pressure sores. It is basically impossible because I have to sit in one position for that long, and that is just not how my body works. Y'all might not have seen it today, but at some point you maybe will. I have very bad spasms, I'm very spastic. So my legs will kick, my whole body shifts to one side or the other. And so sitting in one position to use a mouth stick in front of an iPad is next to impossible. I actually had a quad stick, uh, which is basically like a sip and puff. I don't know if y'all know what sip and puff, sorry, this is a sip and puff where uh, I can control my chair with it. It's like a hard blow to go forward, uh, a soft blow to go right, um, a hard suck to go backwards, and a soft suck to go left. And I have a remote that has about eight or 10 different commands on it. And I have to be perfectly centered in order to use that. And if I spasm at all or move at all, I have to be completely readjusted. Getting to play Civ all night like that was something I haven't been able to do in, well, since my accident. And it was, it was amazing. It was so much fun. I was kicking ass. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not possible with anything else that's out there. I've tried it all, eye tracking software, it's okay, but if you know, I get off center at all, it just doesn't work. There are so many different reasons why what y'all are doing is just going to change the world. It's going to change how people like me are able to just live their lives. It's incredible. I can't even describe it. I, I'm at a loss for words at the impact y'all are making. And you know, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I guess above all else, I had so much fun staying up all night doing that. What civilization were you? What civ? Yeah. I was Korea. I was Korea. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, beating him at chess isn't that fun anymore. <laughs>
it's tough up here, yeah. All right, so I want to just briefly go through a few, at least moments that gave me goosebumps throughout this trial and just talk about at least what they meant for me personally, but also the industry. And if no one have any comments along the way, please feel free to, uh, sure. to jump in. One, two, three, go. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, cool. Right there. Yeah. So this happened one day after surgery. So this is in the ICU, literally probably, I don't know, 12 hours or something after yeah. surgery, not that long after surgery. And yeah, maybe you want to just explain what you're doing in this video? Yeah, y'all put basically different channels up in front of me and I could see certain spikes. And I was just trying to play around with, you know, different movements and imagined movements, attempted movements, just to see if I could see anything. And I was just trying to move my wrist and I noticed a yellow spike and I thought it was super freaking cool. And so I showed them all, and they were all really impressed. They clapped for me, which was very unnecessary, but it was awesome. It was really, really cool. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty sweet. Maybe just for people watching, if we play this one more time, the spike is in the upper right corner. Right. It's the yeah. third one. It's a yellow. I think it's, it's a yellow, yellow spike. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure I'm going to have the ability to play it again, but here we go. Whoa. Oh, can you do that again? <laughs> yep, yep. One, two, three, go. Oh, wow. Right there. Yep. <laughs> So cool. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And now the next video I want to show is actually a couple of days later, we're at the VRBO that the family rented in Scottsdale doing some initial data collection from the device. And what you'll see in the video, most importantly, is the dog Gracie, who is just an absolute <laughs> all-star of a dog. But the bigger picture I want to convey with this video is that it's outside. This is by a pool that this research session is happening, where this initial data collection is occurring. And this is something, you know, basically BCI has exited the lab. That's the point of this video. That's so incredible. I just want to give one round of applause to all the people who made that possible, that you can do yeah. that kind of thing outside. <laughs> all right, the next video I want to show, it's actually, it's a very special moment to me because it's the first time that Nolan is giving, getting control of the computer cursor on the screen. So what you'll see in this video is Nolan actually exiting the calibration experience and getting control of the cursor for the first time. So here we go. Yeah, I think the main point I want to take away from that is just the last comment that Nolan had there. That I think I can do better. It basically summarizes Nolan's, summarizes his work during this entire, entire last month. Okay, the next video I want to just briefly walk through happened actually the same, it happened on the first day of him being able to use his BCI. And I'll play the video and then explain what it is afterwards. So I think the significance of it will be more clear once you've seen the video. Here we go. No, I forgot about it. Oh, well done, man. He's a new world record holder. No, no. I thought it was higher. I thought I would have to get to five or something. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, so I think this is a remarkable technical achievement, but what, the thing I want to highlight about this is actually that this happened on like hour seven and a half of that day. And I just want to just call out again, this is not a typical thing to have the kind of determination and grit required to do this. And it's just a remarkable testament to Nolan that on the very first day he had access to this thing, he blew the previous thing out of the water. It's ridiculous. So yeah, one big hand for Nolan. Please. All right, now this next video, this was actually, I think, a request of, of Nolan. During our first initial home visit, the first time I met, I met Nolan, we talked about things he might want to do with his BCI and how one of the games he likes to play, he referred to it as Beer Yo Kart, not Mario Kart, but... It's a much different game. Much different game. <laughs> one of the goals was to be able to actually play the game Mario Kart with his friends. And in this video, I think we posted this at one point on Slack or a version of this, and there was a vote of sort of which of these was controlled by a BCI, which of these was Nolan, and which of these was his dad. And... <laughs> I'm not saying anything about his dad's skill set, but in some ways it's kind of like a Turing test for BCI. If you can't tell the difference, this is a remarkable, a re remarkable achievement and again a testament to Nolan's ability to figure stuff out blazingly quick. And I'm going to hold off until the end to say which is which, but here we go. All right, so Nolan was the guy on the right, the one who sniped that dude with the green shell halfway through. And also the guy who I'll mention has the best taste in which player to play as in Mario. Dry Bowser for the win. I would like to, just really quick, for those of you who don't know what Burial Kart is, so if you've never played, it's Mario Kart, except uh, everyone starts with a beer in hand, and you're not allowed to drink and drive. 
So you have to pull over and drink your beer periodically, and you have to finish it before the end of the race. And that's it. And so I've wanted to play that. It's so much fun if you've never played. I would say we could have a little tournament in the office, but I'm not sure how y'all feel about your employees getting drunk. But it's so much fun. Just, just what's the, to throw what's the winning there. strategy here? Chug it all. Chug yeah, it all. just yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, shot. Oh, wait, you can't. But you can't drink and drive. You can't. Yeah. So you just stay there. You shotgun it, and then you drive. And hope, hopefully, you're not too jacked up to be able to finish the race. But that's it. That's it. It's so much fun. Okay, that's it. Yeah, may maybe we'll have that set up later. Yeah, okay, okay. I'll play you. Yeah. yeah. The next video here, it's actually a similar one, just a slightly different perspective. And it means something very uh, personal to me and I'm guessing to a lot of you, which is why I wanted to put in this deck. What you'll see in the next video is, it's a very normal scene. What you see is a, a dad and his son playing Mario Kart, something I grew up doing all the time with my parents, something I did a lot with my friends growing up and something that wasn't possible until this, this happened. And I just think the normalcy of it contrasted with the absolute absurdity of doing it using a VCI is something to just marvel at and just take in and soak in for a second. So here we go. It still blows my mind that you know, Yoshi here has been controlled without moving any hand at all. It's just completely using VCI. And then, yeah, the last slide, I just want to return to the message I said at the beginning here, which is that this really, truly is a team effort. I think I'm one of the few people who's got to experience the full, full journey in Arizona with uh, Nolan and his family and just got to see their dynamic, how much they care about each other, and how supportive they are, all are of not just the work we do, but of the impact it's going to have on the thousands of people that come next. Just one more round of applause for the whole gang. All right, and now I think we're about to jump into Q&A, and so I'm going to be the first person to ask a question here, and then I'll hand it off to In Young, wherever he is, to come up here and help, uh, help with this. So my first question to you, since Bane is pictured in this image here, you can say whatever you want about him. You're on stage with cameras and awesome. everything. Awesome, yeah. But I guess my first question to you is, how did you first hear about Neuralink, and what is that yeah. story? Yeah, so I don't know if all of you have heard this story. I didn't know what Neuralink was, six months ago. My buddy Bane, after my accident, eight years ago, almost eight years ago, he's a biology major. He ended up working in a neuroscience uh, lab and he got really into everything that y'all are doing. And about, you know, five months ago, he called me in the middle of the day and he was already kind of slurring his words. So I was like, something, something's afoot. And he told me that Neuralink had uh, been approved by the FDA and y'all had opened up human clinical trials and that I should apply for it. I was like, what the hell is Neuralink? Um, tell me about it. And he did. I guess the best part of the story is that he was wasted when he did it. He was drunk and calling me at like noon. And I was like, why the hell are you drinking at noon? I guess he was trying to prepare himself for a wedding that he was going to. So I need to test to see how much I can drink before I get drunk. Yeah, it was for science, yeah. So he sent me through the whole, like online, we went through the whole application process together. He spelled my name wrong on the application. So there's that, yeah. And I asked for an Iron Man suit. So any of you out there who can make that happen, come see me. But yeah, it was, it was wild. And after that, basically, every step of the way, I just wanted to be the first person to get interviewed. I was like, they, I was emailed back and they said, you know, choose a slot out of these times and we'll like FaceTime or something. And I chose the earliest one and I did that basically every step of the way. I got up to a hospital, which for some reason was only like two hours away from my house, the site that they had chosen, which was just wild. It was, I'm so lucky. Everything just lined up, the stars aligned for this. It was really crazy how fast everything happened. That day, I think it was, well, September 19th or something like that, and five months later, I was getting brain surgery. So it all happened pretty quickly, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs>